Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of pop culture, TV, film, social media, sports, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Ramoliotis. Social media, you know me as PD Beats Season 5 of Lucifer Part 1 will be dropping on Netflix very shortly, and you will recognize my guest as Detective Daniel Espinosa on Lucifer. We are with Kevin Alejandro. Kevin, welcome to Pop Turn It Event. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. And it's almost like the calm before the storm. We know how passionate Lucifer fans get, and more Lucifer is on the way on Netflix. Dude, it's going to be crazy. I am so excited. We... First of all, what you guys should know is that we went into season five thinking it was it, thinking that was it. That was that's that's the finale. So everyone came in with 110 percent to put forward. And we did. And we didn't find out that it wasn't the end until almost the end of season five. I know know, it's everything. But have you kind of noticed, I mean, the show, the show kind of, you know, the show like changed networks is now on Netflix and the, the fan base has just been so loyal since day one. Like it's an amazing fan base. A lot of shows have amazing fan base, but talk a little bit about what you've noticed with Lucifer fan base, Kevin. Yeah. You know, without, without Lucifer's fan base, Lucifer doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, plain and simple. Um, And they are, you're right. The most loyal, the most supportive of any fan base that I've, that I've that I've ever had the privilege of to, to be a part of, you know, um, I I always like to say that they, you know, we have what is it six series regular that they're the seventh. Wow, that's good. Seven series regular because without them, they are true. You know, we listen to them. We want we we do this for them. You know, we hope if there's anybody we want to be proud of what we do, it's them. So yeah. bravo and thank you. You can, yeah, we we say that like in, like in Canada here, big hockey fan. We say that too with the fans. You know, there's six skaters on the ice, clue the goalie. They're the seventh skater. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so man. I like that for sure. Um, can you talk a little bit about your the 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 evolution, the growth of your character, Detective Daniel Espinosa, over seasons? I mean, it's it's every time there's a new season, there's going to be kind of growth for a character. I feel like naturally, you know what I mean? Tell us a little bit about kind of um your experience playing this character and the growth. Yeah, you know, one of the first things that I that was initially attracted to about Dan is just how human he is, yep. and they've never they've never deterred from that. There's never been a moment in all this all the seasons that we've been part of, from season five to even the upcoming season in season six, where he's deterred from his human humanistic qualities. Mm-hmm. He is damaged. We are all da- you know he is he's flawed. We are all flawed, you know, and and they give him the opportunity to explore those flaws flaws and try to correct them. Yeah. And he, he makes decisions to, to try to do them and they're not always the right decisions, but so is, that's what being human is all about. And that's the thing that I love about Dan. And they never, they never venture from that. And you'll see, you know, he has some moments this in season five where he is really put to the test and everything that he believes about humanity and God and the devil and, and everything comes into fruition to him. Where, where there, there are so many, he's forced to think about everything and really, truly step back and try to make an assessment on the world as he knew it and, and, and how it's different and how it affects him. And do you think that's why shows like Lucifer hit stride with the audience, Kevin? Because, you know, um, there, there's a lot of crazy things that happen to Lucifer, but like a lot of the characters are kind of like, they're real. They go for real emotions. They go for relationships. They go for a lot of things. And people are just like relating to that. I agree a hundred percent. And you know, they, the, the writers um, and storytellers of our show do an incredible job with just that, with everybody is, is even, even to the devil. Yeah. Everyone can relate to that yeah. because we all, we all, we all want redemption for something. We all, we're all searching for, for who it is that we are and where we belong and how we fit. And that's a real human quality. And the fact that they're able to do that with all of these, um, with all with with all of the characters like Lucifer and like Aminadil, um and Maze, um, it's just a true testament to their to them. But also, it gives everybody the opportunity to relate that just because you're different, 
doesn't mean you truly are different. Mm -hmm. Just because you look different, just because you come from somewhere different. No, we're all going through the same emotion in one way or another. Absolutely. No, no, for sure. Absolutely. I usually ask this question on the top, but we were, I was excited just to get into Lucifer right away. But like storytelling, acting, when did you kind of decide that was something Kevin Alejandro wanted to do? Was that early on in your life? As far as being an actor? Yeah, in terms of deciding that storytelling was something you wanted to do. Yeah, I got, I got, I was very fortunate to learn that pretty early in life. I think um, I, uh, freshman year of high school is what sealed the deal for me. I, I was, I was happy to be part of, um, a pretty successful high school theater program mm -hmm. uh, in a small town in West Texas, surprisingly enough. And uh, that's still the deal. My biggest mentor was my was my drama teacher. Absolutely. And he's the one who opened my eyes and uh, to the fact that um, someone like me um, could actually go to, to college. Yeah. And not only just wow. to college, to a good university. Yeah. And perhaps get a scholarship for it. And he, he groomed, he, he helped me and guided me and took me under his wing wings to, to to push me in that direction and and that was it i knew it. i knew it from that from from the moment that that he opened my eyes to it um that i would never ever look back i'm playing it simple i mean theater that's where you learn your craft that's where it kind of all starts yeah that's the heartbeat of my entire performance of my entire love for it you know mm -hmm. it's like i have i have a i have a, a 10 uh sorry a 12 year old son caden alejandro yeah. uh, who also wants to be an actor Right. Uh, and it's already doing it and, and taking steps. But Fantastic. when we when we decide we're going to work on an audition, the first thing we do is we go back to my theater tricks, my theater things that help me get focused enough to be able to handle the text. You know? Absolutely. Um, and and uh, um, and I'm very fortunate to have those roots in the, from the very start because we all need those things that puts us in the right mindset to move forward in anything. You know. Absolutely, for sure, Kevin. I'm noticing three kind of three kind of genres of TV and film in the past couple of years that have become so big and have grown so like enormously that they could be kind of considered mainstream. And in back in the day, they might not have been considered mainstream. And I want to talk to them, uh, talk to you about it because you've been you've worked in three of these kind of genres or subgenres and what i'm talking about is nerd geek, nerd and geek culture and superhero culture because you worked on arrow i'm mm -hmm. talking about the horror stuff horror movies horror films you know you work on red state um and then of course you know the supernatural stuff i mean you worked on you know like true blood loose for all that have you noticed that those three kind of genres are like taking over pretty much because i've it's crazy they're like mainstream right now absolutely absolutely man and it's funny it's it's like a subconscious thing i've always loved that genre but you're right it, it is it is pushing itself to the forefront as i look at things even now it's funny like subconsciously i'll read something and be like oh i wonder what this would be like with a twist with a horror twist yeah. you know it's, like, it's just sort of and i don't know why it is but you're absolutely right it is it is something that i'm i, I personally am gravitating to like, i have a production company alejandro films and a lot of what a lot of what we're attracted to are those sort of psychological thriller horror aspect well you don't need the jump scares and the gore to scare people i mean there's different things to scare people now i'm the big fan of kind of there's like there's a lot <laughs> yeah and there's like a lot of movies like the dinner party gone wrong right where like you show up there's all these people at dinner party and it's kind of like what's going on here right like this person's acting kind of weird uh, what's going on here like all the twists and turns and on shutter which is a horror streaming uh, uh platform they just released yeah. uh an amazing uh one of the most scariest and and most creative things i've ever seen called host which took place they made it during quarantine which is a 56 minute uh movie that took place on zoom I'm writing that down right now. It's and the, yeah, host. They do a seance, and then obviously some some stuff happens, and it's one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Um, but it's just amazing because they did it all on Zoom. Like the movie takes place oh. on Zoom. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I heard about this, and it's and it's and it's super scary, huh? It's probably one of the scary, and and that's the thing. I'm very like I'm a big I, I'm I'm a horror geek. Like I love it. You know what I mean? And. Uh -huh. It's it's up there in like like some of the scariest movies, and it's just the the the, the genre is just hitting it out of the park. Like the Invisible Man, I don't know if you saw that. I mean, yeah. so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you yeah, want to kind of work on on projects like that? I mentioned Red State, um, and I love that movie. I'm a big Kevin Smith fan, and I yeah. love when these guys known for their laughs kind of turn it around and work on other things. You know, Jordan Peele as well. But have you thought about kind of getting back in that genre a little bit? 
Oh yeah, I would love to, man. Like like I said, you know, my production company, we're looking for really cool things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the time people people need to be. People want to be entertained, but they also want to think about, without slapping in the head, about what relevant issues are going on in the world. And right now, we are actually living in a really scary time. Absolutely. You know? So so things like hoax that are shot during the quarantine that have that are the, the what makes it scary, I'm sure, is the fact that it is Zoom, and, and that's that's such a norm today. You know, and those are the kinds of things that absolutely, those are the stories I want to tell right now. That all of us together as a company. I'm I'm curious to ask you this because you say your production company. One of the re- one one thing that really makes me watch shows like Lucifer is how they look, how good they look. The directors of, of photography and the cinematographers just like are the unsung heroes and are unbelievable. Have you kind of noticed that there's been this shift where like these shows that are on TV they're like, it's like you're watching a one hour movie and the people working on it, it's like you're going in and working on like a blockbuster movie. Like it's unbelievable what they're doing in TV. Absolutely, man. And you know, it's just because the bar has been raised from show to show to show to show. You know, you, you go back to The Wire, that set a standard of, of, of how that type of show is. You know, even Arrow, Arrow set a standard for the type of superhero, what superhero shows can, you know. And so the standard just gets higher and higher and higher. Um, and so they're just going to get, they're, they're allowing the, these artists to really be at the top of their game and produce the way they want to, uh, they want it to look like. We are very fortunate, particularly on our show, with our, with our director of photography situation, man. Yep. We haven't had, we, we, from the very beginning, we've had the best. Absolutely. You know? No, it's amazing. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experience on Arrow a little bit? Because a lot of my fans love, like, like a lot of my viewers love Arrow and, and you know DC Universe and everything. What was what was that like as kind of an actor working on a show like that? Yeah, no, it was it was fantastic. You know what? I mean, it's funny you say that. Like, things are looking like one hour movies. Being on that set, that was my first like real um, um, uh, jump into the superhero world. Absolutely, right? Like, yeah. I had to really research who Brother Blood was. You know, I had to, to understand so that I did him justice and, and I didn't offend anybody because it's yep. such a niche culture and such a respected culture that you don't want to mess it up. Nope. Right. Um, and so that was my first introduction to that. And then getting on set and seeing the um, I mean, the stunts alone is a feature film. Yeah. Right. And seeing the attention to, the, to detail that that these people were putting into creating the ultimate sort of environment to, out of respect for the culture. Yeah. It just, like I said, it raises the bar. You know, it's like it, anything below that, you're you're not even gonna look at. And you've worked on some some of the best shows, uh, like in television, man. Like it's amazing to see your career, man. Like, congrats on that. Thank you. I've I've had a very fortunate run, and and knock on wood, it continues to just move forward. Absolutely. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn to the chat about Lucifer. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. Had so time. obviously, like it's it, it's dropping pretty soon. They can watch season five, part one on Netflix, correct? Yeah, they can watch it uh, on the twenty first. It, it drops. Um, keep in mind, I directed the mid season finale, so that's the last episode of of, of the first half that drops, um, and it ends with a pretty solid um, clip. And very quickly, what was that like? What was that? What was that like directing an episode? Oh my god, it was amazing. This was uh, especially at that uh, uh, it being the the the, the mid season finale it was a lot of pressure and it was ginormous. Wow! It was super big. I have I I, I got to the honor uh, to uh, of directing I think one of the biggest fight scenes that we've had. Amazing um, uh, on Lucifer um, uh, under under the supervision of our amazing st- uh, stunt team, um, and I think uh, I think the audience is going to be very very happy. And very quickly, where can people follow you on social media to keep update with everything? You know, everything is under my name, Kevin M. Alejandro, um, uh, on Instagram and on Twitter uh, and Facebook as well. Yep. Uh, and uh, you want to, if you want to find out more about what my production company is doing, um, it's a family-run production company with myself, my wife, and my sister-in-law, um, and we are called Alejandro Films, and it's Alejandro Films underscore um, on Instagram. Amazing, man. Well, seriously, congrats on. Uh... On, on Lucifer, everyone's excited to see season five, part one. And uh, thank you again for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Of Take course. Care. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Kevin Alejandro and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. 
Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.